Good morning, you guys. Welcome back to Linda's Pantry. And this morning, we are having a treat for breakfast. I am making a crab cake benedict. And it's another baked egg recipe that I love. And so what we've got is you need some breadcrumbs. And I just measured them out with my ramekins that I'm going to use to bake the eggs. I have a diced red pepper. You want diced pretty small. I've got about a quarter cup of pepper jack cheese, some pancetta, some chicken stock. You're going to need a little bit of cream. You're going to need a package of hollandaise sauce or make your own. I'm rotating this out because it's time. Um, some lump crab meat. You could use uh, leg crab meat too. Um, I actually am going to use this. Um, I'm not going to use the whole pound, obviously. So I'm going to use this and make uh, California rolls for lunches. And I've got some chicken stock, some lemon zest we're going to use, and a finely diced onion. And it got diced so nicely with the Vidalia chopper. Thank you, Paula. <laughs> so we only need a little bit. Um, that's probably even too much, so I'll save, save some of that for uh, something else. I don't think we need quite that much. We only need about a quarter of a cup of finely diced onion with that red pepper. Okay, so I'm going to heat up the skillet and get that pancetta kind of rendering down, and I'll bring you over so you can watch that. All right, so now I've got my pancetta. I'm going to go ahead and render that off. I may or may not use it all. But oh, I won't. It won't go to waste. Trust me. You want that to go over just a medium heat? I turn that down a little bit. Um, I did add a little bit of olive oil in there to just get it started, about a teaspoon, just to get it started. And um, we're going to let this render and drain any excess fat off there. We don't really need that in there necessarily. We'll see how much is left. Okay, so I'll bring you when I'm... So now on. that pancetta is ready to marry up with the vegetables. And I think I am going to use all of it. Um, I just I can't think of why that wouldn't work. I'm just going to let these go for a minute. I, I didn't save all the fat, but a little bit of it. Think of when you're making a stuffing, how you use butter. Um, so it does have a little bit of fat. I'm going to go ahead and put down some like parsley, about a, a tablespoon maybe. We don't need any salt because the pancetta is salty enough. But I do want a little bit of fresh cracked black pepper. Mm -hmm. Some red pepper flakes, just a pinch, just to add a little bit of some heat in the background. That's about it. And we're going to let these get soft because we want everything fully cooked as it goes in, just like when you're making stuffing of some sort. Of. So it's pretty, huh? Okay, I'll be back. Mm, can you smell that? It smells amazing already. Okay, so everything is nice and tender, and it's ready to have some liquid added to this. Delicious. So we're going to add some chicken stock. And a little bit of half and half. Just a little bit. That'll give it a little bit richer buttery flavor. I'm 
when this comes back up to a boil, I'm going to take you over to the other station and get it in our breadcrumbs. It might take it a minute to get back up to heat. Okay. All right. Looking good. All right. Now we're back and I can put this down over the breadcrumbs. And you may or may not need more liquid, but we're going to start with this. So you want to toss this. If you just let it sit, you wouldn't get a good saturation. And I've got man down. Somebody jumping overboard. And if you've got too much liquid, you just add some more breadcrumbs to it. But you want them to get everything. Every breadcrumb should have some of what's going on. If that makes sense. Mmm. <clears throat> smells really, really good. And then at this point. I want to do a little baby taste test just to see if we have enough seasoning. I better grab some pancetta. Mmm. Mmm. I don't think so. Okay. So now what we want to do is I want to grate some lemon zest down over this. I've washed this lemon. Um, citrus, there, it's pretty common, unless you're getting it from a farmer that doesn't spray anything. It's pretty common to have been sprayed with something and I don't want it. So I'm going to put the zest of about a half a lemon in here. It'll brighten up the flavor and bring out the flavor of the crab. And I've got about, how? Oh, half a cup or so of crab. I actually went through it. You should always go through it with your fingers and make sure that, that all the little shells and stuff are out of there. <clears throat> and then here we go with our cheese. And it's not a lot of cheese, it's just enough to bind that stuff together and give you that extra layer of richness that you just are going to love. Let me just get that mixed up really good in here. Toss that around. Doesn't that look delicious? Mm. Alrighty. And then it's time to fill ramekins. These ramekins are going to go in a 375 or 400 degree oven, actually 400. I've got my little on-the-counter oven preheating, and there we go. And I kind of push into the center, so it pushes things up to the sides because you've got to make room for the eggs, right? There's that one. Delicious. Oh, can't wait. And there should be enough fat in here that it, it shouldn't stick to these two ramekins at all. And boy, what do you know? I didn't make enough for an army. I, I made enough for two. <laughs> That's crazy. That's unusual. And again, I'm just going to push the center with my clean hands. Okay. Oh, delicious. Okay. And now next we have the eggs. And I like to Done, gone to all this trouble and expense because this isn't, I mean, some of this was really reasonable, but the crab is nothing I want to waste. <clears throat> so, what I do in this instance is I'm going to crack these eggs. We don't have a rooster, so there's no risk of uh, anything like that, but I want to make sure that the egg is good. 
before I just throw it in my dish. So I'm gonna crack them in another bowl, and I don't want the yolk broke. No broke yolk. Perfect, beautiful. And then I just lay that right on top. Delicious. I've never really had a bad egg, but I have had, you know, where the yolk broke, and it's very disappointing. So I like my yolks runny. Okay, I'm going to top that off with a little pinch of cayenne pepper, and then we are good to go. Just to make it pretty. Okay, it's gonna go in that 400 degree oven for about 20 minutes um, until those eggs are baked and we are ready to start the hollandaise. And while that's cooking, I will put the hollandaise sauce on to get that going and I'll bring you back to when we're plating. Well, it's already plated, but when it's done. Okay, doesn't that look fabulous? I'm gonna put some hollandaise over the top of that. The yolks are still nice and runny. You just want to cook, everything in here is cooked. You just want to cook it until that um, the white is cooked to your liking. And then top it off with a little bit of paprika to make it pretty. How pretty is that? Mmm, that looks delicious. And I'm going to prove it because i got to taste it. Get in there with the yolk. Look at that. Beautiful. I don't want to touch the ramekin, it's really hot. So you just have to get down in there, get into the crab. It's hot. Wow, it's not beautiful. Mmm. Wow. That is absolutely amazing. You can taste a little bit of the background of the <clears throat> brightness from the lemon zest. The creaminess of the egg yolk and the hollandaise with that sweet crab in there. It is absolutely delicious. And then every once in a while you can get a little bite of that pancetta. So I hope this inspires you. I hope you try this, and um, this would be great for an Easter brunch or Mother's Day brunch uh, for everyone. You could do a bunch of them at a time, put them in the oven. Anyways, hope it inspires you. I hope you come back. I hope you subscribe, and if you like this, I hope you give me a thumbs up. And if you really like it, post it on your Facebook page. All right, you guys. God bless.